All right, so another um, short little video here. Uh, this one I'm going to go over briefly by itself, um, irregardless of everything that was detailed in the longer video, how to animate something. So for me, I'm just going to start off with a circle here. So I'm going to use black so it's easy for you guys to see that it has, an, has a nice, easy outline. It's very easily um, seen from a distance amidst all of this gray and white. And remember that the gray and white checkerboard is just a visual representation. That there's nothing there. It's transparent. There's no colors. There's no anything. Um, it's just empty. So now I have my circle here. So I'm going to make my circle this teal color. Um, remember, if you want to fill in a shape, I have the bucket tool here. I click inside of that. Now, if I want to animate something, down here in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen, this thing that says GIF frames, GIF frames, however you pronounce it, um, when you get there, you'll notice that it has a 1, and it has our, a smaller version of our shape here uh, in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen. So, first off, to animate something, you can always add a frame, but whenever you add a frame, it's just adding an empty frame. So like I said, we have one here. Um, just to kind of detail before I jump into this, an animation is just a bunch of still pictures back to back to back to back to back to back. The same thing is true for video. It's just a bunch of images back to back to back over and over again. Um, and then they're put all in order, and it cycles through those things very quickly to make it look like it's moving. So you want to use those same kind of uh, processes here to make something like it's moving. So first off, I have frame one, right? It has this circle in it. If I click frame two, it's empty. Now, it's not all the way empty. You'll notice that there's a ghosted version of what used to be there in frame one whenever I added that frame. So just to show you that again, if I click add frame, right, this button right here, then it's going to add an empty frame. Now, what this is doing is showing me where the things were in frame one. It's not actually on frame two. That way, whenever I go to draw on top of this, I can clearly see where my thing was before. That way, if I have to redraw it or move things or slightly change things, it's clear to me um, where it was. That way, I'm not just drawing blindly and my animation looks all crazy with things zipping around and looking strange and weird. So let's say that for me, I don't want to redraw things. So down here in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen, right underneath add frame is the option to remove frame. So I'm going to remove this one because I don't want to redraw this circle over and over again. We'll talk about more complex animations again if we're out for an extended period of time. But for now, um, I'm clicking this and I'm going to remove this frame. So now I'm back to frame one. What we're going to do to make this thing move very easily is we're going to click copy frame, right? So frame one and frame two are the exact same. And then I'm going to use my move tool here on frame two, and I'll move it just a little bit. So I move this just a smidge. You guys will notice right here, it's showing frame one through that because it's showing me where, it, where it's coming from. That way, whenever I go to animate this, it's clear to me where it was, um, and there's not any major problems with that. Now, however, Let's say that before you start animating, you've made the decision for some reason to fill in the background. My suggestion is you do not do that until you've got your whole animation squared away. Do not put any color in the background. Otherwise, you'll notice how it blocks this out. I can't see where my thing was, where it's going to be. All I can see is a purple background. So suggestion to you is that you do not fill in the background until you've gotten everything else squared away. And you can go back and add that in your animation frames later on. So we've got it moving just a little bit like this, right? So down here in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen, and I have frame one, and I have frame two. So it's moving just a smidge. Now, if I want to see how my animation is looking along the way, if I click preview, right, it's going to cycle between frame one and frame two. What it's doing is looping continuously. So it's going one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, back and forth um, continuously. So it's just zipping back and forth between those two frames. However, I can make my animation look a lot smoother if I make more frames, look, it's headed in a direction or whatever. So let's say I want this to go down or something. So I'm going to, you know, again, copy my frame. I'm going to use my move tool. Let's move this down a little bit so I can see that this is up here, right? Then I'm going to go down here again. So I have frame one and frame two. I want to copy my most recent frame because I just have to move it just a little bit from there. So I hit copy frame, slide it down a little bit. Then I'm going to copy frame, slide it down a little bit. So again, if you're unclear what I'm doing, I have my most recent frame selected and I'm going to copy that with the copy button then I'm going to slide it down a little bit so now I have five frames so if I go through this slowly for you guys frame one frame two frame three frame four frame five now if I hit preview to kind of see how my animation is looking like this right it's moving down five frames sequence sequentially one two three four five one two three four five one two three four five just cycling through that infinitely so let's see I want it to come back up 
to where it was. So if I hit copy frame, I use my move tool, move it up a little bit, copy frame, move it up a little bit, copy frame, move it up a little bit, right? So now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and it goes back to one. So let's hit preview now and see what that looks like. So it's going up and down, it looks more fluid that way. All I did was just copy frame and make slight alterations to that. That's my recommendation to you whenever you're animating something. Um, but it kind of shows you how to use this down here in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen to make something move and to do what you'd like to do um, and so forth. But then again, let's say I want this. My animation's all finished. I'm good to go. Now's the time whenever I would come back in and I would fill in the background and all of mine. So sometimes you're going to get a lot of frames and the animations along the way. But you're waiting until the very end to add color to this in the background. Otherwise, you will not be able to see what your thing was. So now if I've gone back in there right now, I've got an orange background or a yellowish orange background with this teal circle bouncing up and down in there. So that's how you animate something. Um, copying frames, changing slight pieces and parts. Using the add frame button uh, will cause you to have to redraw things. And I don't think you want to do that. Copying, fr copying a frame is much easier. So... Let that be your friend. Okay, that's the end of this video. That is how to animate things. If you have other questions, please ask.